All right, it's that time of year, if you haven't already started, uh, getting your gardens in. Uh, this is a 1979 Troy built horse, uh, four speed tiller. Uh, it's getting where it's been pretty hard to start with the old Tecumseh engine on it. So I did pick up a Predator six and a half horse. So we'll get that thing put on here, installed. Um, I did pick up a new set of tines. So we'll put a new set of tines on it. And this thing should be good as new. All right. All right, for starters, gotta take the throttle cable off. And then uh, this engine guard around here. It's got two bolts. One here, one on the other side. And then that one down there in the center. Okay, the stop bolt for this engine guard is a three quarter inch. Right, take the throttle cable off. You just have this one clamp here. You can either use a Phillips or a quarter inch drive. Quarter inch size uh, socket. And once that's out of the clamp, you just twist it around and pop it out of that. Stick it up out of the way. Okay, the other two bolts for the engine guard. One's located here, one's directly across to the other side. They're both a 9 16th. Get that taken off real quick. Okay, get this guard off. You can see there really isn't anything on this side of the engine. On this side you have the carburetor, air filter, and exhaust. So we should be able to pull this thing up and uh, just kind of warm it around. That stuff. Alright, off camera I tried to pull that off of there. Uh, there's enough room down to that bottom bar. So there's two other bolts right here. We can take that off and take it off in two pieces. All right, I'm gonna get that off of there, and this uh, engine guard will be off. These are bolts for this engine guard are half inch.
managed to take it off by just loosening that bottom set of bolts that uh, you have enough room to drop down. All right, everything's out of the way. The engine, throttle cable, engine guard. The only thing holding this engine on is there's uh, four bolts. Two over here, two on the other side. They're both a uh, half inch head. And then you have the 9 sixteenths head on this pulley right here. So we'll need to get that bolt out and start loosening up on these. We're going to get that pulley to pop off that shaft and then the engine will just come right off. All right. All right, to get the uh, its bolt out of the pulley here, you can see it just moves. So we're going to need to put it in gear so we'll get some tension on this belt. Uh, there also is another option on removing all of this if a person wanted to. You can take out this 3 8 bolt on each side, which goes back to the forward and reverse controls. That's what moves this up and down. And then you could pull this gem nut off and this bolt out and drive these uh, pins out from each side. See the other one? Right there. And then this whole thing will come off as an assembly. Um, I'm still going to try to take the pulley off and unbolt the four bolts from that. I don't know if that's going to be any quicker or slower, but that's what I'm going to try. Okay, this thing's still wanting to spin even in gear, so I've got a pair of pliers, smooth jaw pliers, because this is a this is your reverser and it's rubber. So I'm just going to use a pair of pliers to hold this other side while I loosen this nut off with this bolt. That is loose from the bolt. There's the reverser wheel. Now let me try to get this to pop off of here. Looks like it's gonna move, so lucked out there. Alright, well I'm gonna get this belt, put it back in neutral so there's a some looseness to the belt, pop the belt off, then I'll pull this pulley back where I can get to these four engine mounting bolts. gonna slide right off so, so we got room here now to get these bolts out so when we get down closer to the last ones we'll just have to watch the engine so it doesn't fall off and pull the uh, finish pulling the pulley off the shaft and set the engine down on the ground and these mounting bolts are a half inch You watch all this. I'll get all these out and we'll get back whenever we pull the uh, going to pull the engine off. All right, to help hold this engine, I'm using my vehicle lift. I just have a little chain come along, 
wrapped around the engine just to support it while I get this last bolt out. So let's get it out and get this engine off. the engine. Alright. Engine's off. Wasn't too difficult. Now we'll get the, uh, get everything kind of cleaned up a little bit and get this new one out. Put it on. This old engine does have some spacers on it down here. Uh, we'll take them off because I'm sure the new engine won't have these. But these will be to get that pulley spaced out where it's in line with the lower one on the transmission. All right, we've got a 212cc Predator engine. Uh, I believe it's six and a half, seven horse. I don't remember. Anyways, let's unbox this thing so it's all included uh, when you pick up this from your local Harper Park. Plug tool. And let's get this thing out of the box. This is it. Uh, kind of surprised it didn't come with a uh, quarter oil or oil for it. That's okay. Uh, we'll see how it does on this tiller. Um, from the research I've done for a tiller, we are going to have to disable the low uh, engine oil cutoff. So we'll be doing that as well. So, anyways, let's get this thing uh, 
throw it on here and see how it does. Okay, I've got the shims that came off that Tecumseh engine put on this Predator. Uh, it's uh, usually a good idea. Before I get this thing installed, I'm going to put some anises on that shaft and on the uh, keyway. Just I don't know when the next time I'm going to be pulling this thing off. And anises will really help in the future if I, if I need to do that. All right. Well, I forgot to hit the record button, uh, but it is mounted. It really wasn't that bad. Stuck it up there and uh, pushed the pulley up onto the shaft and got all four bolts started. Uh, the only thing I've run into now is the main shaft. The Tecumseh was a uh, fine threaded 3 8 bolt. And this Predator is going to be a fine threaded 5 16 bolt. Which I don't have, so I'm going to have to run to the store and get some bolts so I can put the reverser on and then put some oil in it, some gas, and it should fire up and go. Alright, went to the store. Uh, that was the original 3 8 fine threaded bolt. Here's the 5 16 So you're going to need one of those. That's an inch and a half long. Uh, we'll get that reverser mounted. Uh, put some oil in it and some gas and get it fired up and uh, then I'll look into hooking up the uh, throttle cable Reverse her. Some decent shape. Just gonna get rubber on it. Some pliers on it. Again, like next thing I'm going to be putting some engine oil in it. The uh, book that came with the engine shows to use 10W30 for the temperature range that I'm in. Uh, it's supposed to take it around half a quart. So uh, it does have a dipstick on each side. It shows, it's got a little picture, basically showing, get it up in here on the hash marks, it's about halfway up the threads, um, so we'll get some engine oil put in it. All right, I did move the depth gauge all the way down and I added a board under that stop just to level out the engine for checking the oil. Okay, it looks like the oil's about half up the threads. Okay, yeah, it's right up on the full mark. So we'll get some gas put in it and uh, get this thing fired up.
Alright, it's got oil in it. It's full of gas. Comes with this little quick start guide. Kind of shows you where everything's at. How to add the oil, how to start it. So let's get it started. Okay, the uh, switch is on, the fuel shutoff is on, the choke, you can put it there. It's on low throttle. Uh, I've still got to figure out how to just move it up to about a third throttle. Uh, I need to figure out how to hook up the cable. I haven't looked into that yet, but let's uh, see how hard it is to start for this first start. Second pull, fired up. Alright, well, let's see how this thing goes down in the garden. Alright, one more thing I was going to go over. On these Predators, they have a uh, oil pressure switch so they'll shut the engine off if it detects low oil. Uh, I'm not usually a fan of bypassing stuff like that, but a lot of these tillers, whenever they're sunk in the ground, this engine's up at such an angle that oil will actually uh, quit being detected by that switch up there. So uh, if that's the case and that does happen, then there's a yellow wire coming out of the side of the block that's actually going to the switch. And then it comes up to this box, yellow and black coming out of it and running over to shut it off. But all you gotta do to bypass it is unhook those wires and you're not gonna have to worry about that being an issue but do that at your own discretion um, yeah if you run out of oil you've now lost your protection for it shutting itself off so use it as you will I've got the tiller down here at the garden. Uh, I'm still just kind of slowly running it around for a little while uh, since it's a new engine. I have not replaced the tines yet and the throttle is still not hooked up. I'm just going to run it by hand for the moment uh, just because I need to get this garden tilled up pretty bad and swap the tread around on that right side wheel. But let's see how it does even with these old tines. Y'all can see I was having issues getting this thing to stay going forward. Uh, I'll end up replacing the belt here sometime, but what I did was I adjusted this uh, forward reverse linkage. Here I lowered it down because it had a lot of slop down in between there, so that should take care of that issue for now until I get a new belt. All right, let's see how it does this time.
right, adjusting that, uh, that belt tensioner. That helped out quite a bit. Uh, I've got a lot more killing to do. As you can see, I've only made two passes. Um, I'll still get the tines changed here pretty soon, and I'll go ahead and replace the belt. Uh, anyways, if you found anything in this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Alright, see you later.